afternoon. We come in our daily Bible reading to John chapter 13. And in the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John, we run into Jesus doing one of the most remarkable things he ever did in this life. And while the Gospel of John is punctuated by the miracles and signs of Jesus, giving sight to the blind, feeding the 5,000 men, and even raising Lazarus from the dead to prove that he is no mere man, but that he is Son of God, the Messiah, the Christ, King of the Jews. In John chapter 13, we don't see him doing something miraculous. In fact, we see what many people would consider to be the opposite. We see Jesus down washing the disciples' feet. Note with me in the text in verse 1, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Verse 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. And he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. This is absolutely amazing. Here you have in the Bible text, Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And if you think that sounds kind of gross, I think you're right. Imagine even in the first century world the type of footwear that they'd be wearing, the sandals, and the amount of walking they'd be doing. It might be even worse than what we can imagine. But here's Jesus, the King of the Jews, the Messiah, the Christ, even thinking, as you can see in the first five verses, that his end is near. And he stops to teach this valuable lesson. Now, this is pretty amazing. I want you to stop for a moment and think, if you had just one week to live, what lesson would you want to impart to all your loved ones? What would you want them to know? What would you want them to learn? Well, Jesus, thinking about the end, knowing that his end is near, that he came from heaven and was about to go back to be with God, decides to teach the disciples a critical, powerful, and humbling lesson in humility. I think this is also important, by the way, to see Jesus' perspective. Did you see that in the middle verses of what we read? He is focused on where he came from and where he was going. We need to focus on who made us and where we're going to, and that might help us with this lesson in humility. Now, as you might expect, the disciples were a little confused by Jesus, the Christ, getting down to wash their feet. And Peter even is going to reject him. He says, you know, don't wash my feet. But Jesus tells them how essential it is that he wash him. And then Peter would say, well, then wash my whole body too. But what is the lesson that Jesus was trying to impart? Well, look with me in verse 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I, then your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Powerful lesson. Jesus says, look, you, you rightly understand I am the master. And in verse 16, you know a servant's not greater than his master. So if I am down washing your feet, what is your obligation? What is my expectation for you? Well, to wash feet as well. I think verse 15 is one of those verses that we could highlight in this section. I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. This is going to be amazing. And we're going to see, Lord willing, in our Bible readings this week that Jesus gives the Holy Spirit and promises that the Holy Spirit will be given to the apostles. And they're going to be able to do miracles. They're going to be able to work powerful signs. But Jesus tells this group of people with an application that certainly stretches to me and all of us today that no matter how powerful you may be, no matter how effective you may be, and no matter how long you've been my disciple, you are to wash one another's feet. Isn't that a humbling lesson? We think of all the great things we could do in the service of God, all the things we could do, all the ways we could help. And Jesus says, I want you to wash feet and do it how in verse 15? Based upon my example. Of course, in John 13, it doesn't end there, and it continues with this exchange where Jesus knows that Judas is going to betray him. But I want you to really see the end of John chapter 13 with me, beginning in verse 31 again. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. 
Now, I think verse 34 and 35 are so rich. There's so many wonderful applications. So let's just pull out three applications out of John 13, and our lesson will be concluded today. One of them in verse 34, this commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Now, that's powerful. It's one thing to say we need to love one another and to know that we should do good things for each other. But how did Jesus love? Well, even in this chapter, he washed feet. And by the way, you think about Jesus. When did he wash feet? Right before his time was coming up. Jesus prioritized this lesson in humility and service. And also, how did Jesus love? Sacrificially. Jesus loved to the point of laying down his life for all of us. Now, a second lesson in verse 35, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. That's also powerful. Jesus says, not only are you obligated, are you expected to love one another sacrificially with the high bar of service that I have exemplified for you, but that this is an evangelistic opportunity. People will know you are different. He'll know that we are something greater than everyone else because we're living to please the creator who made everyone else. You see, in John 13, this is the exact opposite of being prideful. This is about getting followers to give glory to God. This is the Matthew 5, 16 principle. Let your light shine before men. So yes, they'll see your good works, but to do what with it? That they may glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now this is amazing and this is remarkable. Jesus says you are to love as I have loved, that is sacrificially. You are to love in a way that will be evangelistic. It will spread the light. But also notice this other lesson that Peter asked about in verse 36. He says, Lord, where are you going? Now, this is back from verse 33. He says, I'm only with you a little while. And the last phrase there, where I'm going, you cannot come. This is going to be important. This is going to set up our study for tomorrow's lesson in John chapter 14. But one final lesson is to think about the sacrifice of Jesus even in his last week. I want us to decide right now today as we're listening to this, as we're watching, as we're doing our daily Bible reading. What are the most important things in my life? And Jesus puts right at the top of the list, serving and loving others. So we learn that we must love sacrificially one another. We need to love sacrificially in a way that will be a light to the world. But we need to know not only is this a command, not only is this a good idea, this is essentially one of the most important things that our maker has instructed for us to do while we live in this life. How can I serve others today? Think to yourselves, discuss in your families, what can I do to show love for others in a sacrificial way? What's something I can do that would be proverbially or literally washing the disciples' feet? Jesus was the perfect teacher, the perfect master, and the perfect model. And we pray that we have the strength to emulate our wonderful Lord each and every day. Lord willing, join us tomorrow as we continue in our gospel study of John in chapter 14.